We're here uh, today at uh, the Institute for Policy Studies. We're in interviewing uh, uh, Reverend uh, Douglas Moore, who is a, a civil rights uh, uh, activist and uh, an influential activist, in, first in North Carolina in the 1950s, uh, and then in Washington, D.C. in the 1960s and 1970s, and uh, uh, kept uh, off his uh, civil rights activities by being elected to the first District of Columbia uh, City Council. And uh, so we'd like to start off uh, okay. just uh, asking you uh, where you uh, grew up, uh, your family, and uh, how you uh, uh, became a, a, a civil rights activist uh, and, and minister also. Yeah. Well, I'm from Hickory, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm trying to figure out how I got well, I think I think I backed into this because I went up to came to to Washington D.C. I want to get out of Hickory, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so I came to to D.C. and I worked in my uncle's fish market. Oh, I went to Howard, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I worked in my uh, uncle's fish market. Mm -hmm. And you know, the old building they have uh, redone it, but right across the street is I think it's an apartment house now was where my uncle, Oscar Barnes, had a fish market. And this was O Street and... O Street. Uh, yeah. Now, O Street, across the street, was a great big market. Mm -hmm. But Oscar Barnes had a smaller market, mm -hmm. and anybody who came up from Hickory, they stopped at his place to get a job. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of guys uh, worked for them. Mm -hmm. But they were kind of... Uh, uh, cautious about my working in the fish market because they knew my mama weighed about 98 pounds, but she was a terrorist, the first terrorist I ever met. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was awful. I'm the only child. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. So, uh, 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 Oscar Barnes had a, a fish market called North Carolina Fish Market. Mm -hmm. I did not cut a fish head off, and I didn't do a fish thing mm -hmm. because they were scared because my mother was a real terrorist. Mm -hmm. She was a little t nice woman. She said, I don't want him be cutting his hand off of no fish market. This is the only son I got. I, 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 I said, oh, God. Mm -hmm. So, um, over across the street was a big, uh, in fact, they re remodeled the market right across mm -hmm. the street. And I think there's an apartment house, great big old apartment house there. Mm -hmm. But we were on the first floor. So that's where I worked in the watermelon part. Because they were afraid that if I were in that fish market, because I had an uncle man named Willett Johnson, he he worked yeah. in the fish market. I had another uncle named John. They were but the fish market was for me off limits. Mm -hmm. Because they realized that my mother was a terrorist. Yes. That if, <laughs> if anything, their sister, they realized, they realized that if. <laughs> so they kept you out uh, delivering uh, and hawking uh, watermelons. Hawking water. Uh, uh, that's how right I learned around. about the city. Yeah. Going all over the city selling watermelons. And you jump out and shout <laughs> watermelons or. I saw, oh, no, I saw it on the truck and somebody way up in the, the uh -huh. fifth floor, or tenth floor, mm -hmm. way up in the building. See, I want one and I. Get the watermelon, get all the way upstairs to get the money to come down. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did every summer. They they they, they had a gr an agreement that they would not uh, let me work in the fish market. No, my uncle Bill, he was uh, mm -hmm. worked in the fish market. John, mm -hmm. he with my two uncles, they they worked in the fish market. But I never had a chance to uh, clean a single fish. Two. Okay. No more fish market. Yeah, we'll, we'll jump to the back because I had asked you about uh, growing up in uh, North Carolina. So you were an only child. We only heard a child. About, about your your mother. Uh, did, what were some of the things you did? I understand you uh, had a were a Boy Scout. Uh, that was some significance to that. Oh, I became an Eagle Scout. I had nothing yes. else to do. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in North Carolina, I didn't do anything. Oh, I used to carry papers mm -hmm. for the Hickory Daily Record, you know, mm -hmm. going on this sort of thing. But when I got to Washington, D.C., I wanted to come oh, to D.C. because... Let's, 
Howard was there, yeah. and I was able to go to Howard University School of Theology, mm -hmm. School of Religion, they call it theology then. And then I'd come down on Saturday and they would put me on a watermelon truck, but they never let me. Uh, let's jump back to North Carolina. Uh, back in, in uh, North Carolina, though, uh, I understand that you were the val valedictorian. Uh, yes, of my class. Was, uh, and uh, what, so you were a good student. Uh, you did, did you have other activities? Uh, well, I played football and basketball. Mm -hmm. We didn't have track team. Mm -hmm. Only the white schools had track team. They were elitists. Mm -hmm. but, uh, D did all that, I mean, obviously that would have affected how you came to be uh, involved in civil rights activities, I assume, the, the growing up. Uh, uh, no, I have never thought, of, not have thought about it. Uh -huh. How did I get involved in the civil rights movement? I think uh, I had a tough, brilliant grandfather. And uh, he had three boys, something like that. I was a grandson, and, and, and I followed him around everywhere he went. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was his gun bearer. Then he would go uh, hunting. Yeah, his double barrel shotgun. Yeah. He, he would go up to the, mm -hmm. to the, to the what do you call it, the barber shop on Saturday. And he never carried the gun. He said, okay, you carry my gun, we're going to the barber shop. I said, oh. I mm -hmm. said yes, Grandpa. I don't thought about that. Yeah, this kid is carrying a double barrel shotgun to Bennett's Barber, and everybody accepted it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Peter Forty John was a was was a quite a powerful man. He was a preacher, mm -hmm. and he was a teacher, you know, mm -hmm. and he was a scholar in terms of um, mm -hmm. different kinds of things that people were looking at. Mm -hmm. So. I never got a chance to work in the fish market. Oh, oh. Um, I may buy me a fish market one day, okay. but uh, I, they never would permit me because they were afraid that if I got in the fish market and I cut off a finger, was, that little 90-pound woman that was my mother would be up was, there on their butts. Was your mother a big influence on your uh, thinking and, and growing up? Oh, no question of, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because she, she was very insistent she told my uncles he is not to work in the fish market mm -hmm. and you find some prayers else he can work but i don't want him to come back home as with a nub like nub heart and that's all oh. back in uh in north carolina when you were a, a newspaper uh, boy d delivering uh, newspapers no. did uh that there was a, a dinner for the for the newspaper boys and yeah. you were the only uh black yeah, uh, went. carrier yeah. uh, how, how did that it happen? worked fine how did that happen? Nobody yeah. said a thing. Yeah. <laughs> this would have been, you would have been, what, 12 years old? Something oh, I was older than that. Older than that, 15? I was about, I don't know whether I had already been to Howard for a year or I had gone to Howard or not, but I was well aware of what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I just, I didn't tell my parents I was going to do this. Mm -hmm. My daddy was a high school principal, I didn't tell him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my mother worked for a very wealthy family and they paid her more than she was worth. And I didn't bother that. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I just kind of played it cool because mm -hmm. I know that uh, they were concerned about my work in that fish market because they had a big long knife, a sharp pull. Uh, so my, since Oscar Bond was the owner of the fish market, uh, I just worked on his watermelon truck. I never worked inside the fish market. It's the it, when you were in when you were growing up in uh, North Carolina, uh, when you were the valedictorian of the class. Uh, what kind of uh, you, you delivered a speech to yeah. the, the class? Uh, what was there anything? Uh, it was a revolutionary speech. It was it was something they never heard before. But what did you say? Uh, I don't remember now. But I, the gist of it. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I I talked about. I have to go back and, and restructure this, but. I remembered that that speech upset the whole city because the superintendent had told the Mr. Broom, who was the, who was the, what do you call it, the principal, he and my father went to A&T together. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So they 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 had a long relationship, mm -hmm. and here uh, I'm up there upsetting the whole city and everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and Mr. Broom was in a tight spot because of his friend, uh, son. J. W. Moore, Reverend Douglas E. Moore. I was uh, at that time. I was also a newspaper boy, right? So I carried papers around this sort of thing. D did uh, in in the speech was? Could you tell in the audience if there was reaction to your speech? Were people they went crazy. cheering, booing? No, booing? no, they weren't booing. They were cheering. Cheering, yeah, yeah. And that was woof. Yeah. Mm. And the principal was sliding down into his seat. Mr. Broom. His name was. Uh, Oh, Mr. Broom. Mr. Broom uh, went to A&T. That's which, what's the name? That's in Greensboro. Greensboro, okay. A&T, Agricultural Technical That's School. Right. Uh -huh. And my father went to A&T, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So Mr. Broom and my father knew each other. Mm -hmm. Right. But they never crossed each other in terms of well, what they were doing. But, but Mr. Broom was the principal of, right. of Ridgeview High School, okay? Right. What happened in the aftermath of this speech? I mean, did you get called in by anybody? Did you no. get... They said it was useless. <laughs> they said it was useless. Yeah. Do, do you remember any of the, the sort of the, the message that you gave? Oh, that we I, I talked about the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment of the Constitution. Well, how, how that happened was that... Um, uh, there was a professor down in about the third grade who had uh, selected me to be one of their students for the Elk Oral Tarka contest. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, well, why don't you try this? Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to say what you want to say. I said, oh, really? I was <laughs> going to do that anyway. <laughs> so I gave this speech. Mm -hmm. And I gave it at the graduation of, uh, of of one of the classes, and it shook the city and everything about else up to here. This thick roll had jumped up talking about the 13th to 14th and 15th right. Amendment of the Constitution. Well, I had to read all that mess, and I just came out with it, mm -hmm. and that was the end of my being a a, a fishmonger. Did um, did you? Did your father have experienced any repercussions no. as a result? That, my that, father yeah. uh, and mother had gotten a divorce, mm -hmm. and my father was in uh, a little place called oh, I can't think where it is right now. He was down. He was he was down east. He was not in the same. T I see. Same I place. see. I see. No, 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 yeah. no. He he had uh, gotten a principalship down in. Uh, little place I have to think about where it, I can't even remember where it is now but he was a high school principal mm -hmm. and that's where he wasn't in Hickory at all I got you. Okay. so he was down there in uh, whew, boy that's a long time ago I can't even remember but that's where he was what, what was your mother's reaction to the speech or did she know you were going to deliver this particular speech oh, I didn't tell him yeah no I, I never one thing that my brother my cousins and I we had, we had a rule don't tell mama and daddy about anything we're doing because then they will come down with the heavy, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So, but when they found out about it, it was over. Yes. You know, you know, and did that was she, it. Did she say anything good for you or? She, what, just, she didn't say anything to me about it. Yeah, yeah. Nobody in the family said anything to me about it because they said I was a kind of stern and I mean, I was, Oh, uh, very serious about what I thought was important. There was an uh, incident uh, of your grandfather uh, when he was uh, challenged a policeman uh, who slapped his son. Is that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What? What? What was that? Uh, th did that sort of? Oh, that was that was yeah. incredible yeah. for for uh, a black man to slap a policeman. Mm-hmm. Well, now, of course, now he had a, he, he, he was a, a man who had a shotgun. Yes, yeah. So he could protect himself, and for some reason, uh, Hickory was a strange place uh, uh, because on the one hand, here was this little black boy like me raising hell, going to the restaurants and places like that, this kind of stuff. 
And uh, they knew that my father was a high school principal. Right. right. And some of them may have talked with him, but uh, he never said, stop, don't do this. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you're growing up, so you have to decide what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But be sure to know what you're doing when you do it. Mm -hmm. He never said, no, you can't do that, you're black, blah, blah, blah. My father mm -hmm. never said to me, you are a Negro, you can't do this, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So and you just uh, mentioned about going around to these restaurants and things. That was, you were talking about sit-ins, right? Yeah, sit-in. And you, and these were 1957, before the ones that received a lot more oh, yeah. uh, notice a few years later. In, they say uh, I'm the father of the sit-ins. I think that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah tell, tell about the, well, I guess there were a number of places you went, but there was a famous incident at an ice cream parlor where they've since it put up Yeah. Well, yeah. it was Woolworth, I believe. Now, there, there may have been another place, but I did go to those places, and mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to go there. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the white kids were from in court or somewhere. They said, well, he wasn't supposed to be at that restaurant. Mm -hmm. and, and and the other white the, the, you know, the principal, the people, that, they didn't say anything about it. Mm -hmm. the, the white kids said, well, he wasn't supposed to be there. He's black, but he was there. And they never said a word about mm -hmm. uh, Jack Moore's son. Jack Moore was the principal of mm -hmm. Ridgeview High School. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a first-rate, that was a, really a first-rate uh, school. So, um, they accepted it and said that was the that was the more boys the principal had nothing to do with it. the principal didn't even know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the principal and my father were went to a and t together mm -hmm. so you know the, yes they talked and they kind of knew that i was not going to back down well i i neglected to follow up a, a question when i was asking about your grandfather and the policeman what happened after uh, th that incident, I mean, did, was, was your grandfather arrested? Was he? No. Yeah. Because he was, uh, he was a Methodist preacher, but also he was very good at using a shotgun. And they knew it because he used to go and go hunting with white men who didn't know how to shoot. So, so and do you remember what exactly happened? I mean, he just, the, the he was a He was a mean motherfucker, I'm going to tell you that. He was, uh, he was, let me see, I, they can't blame me for that. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Farney Johnson was something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they knew that he had a shotgun, he had a pistol, and that if he said something, that he, he, was, he was a very stern black man, yeah. you know. And that. Uh, so the police just let it. No, they, Let him go. they yeah. knew who Mr. Pete Johnson was, yeah. you know. He had finished Livingston College, mm -hmm. which is a little AME Zion school down in the, about 50 miles from Hickory. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he just said, my son wants to go to college, so, so that's where he's going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whatever it was, it never came an issue in the community. Because everybody knew that Reverend Peter Farney Johnson mm -hmm. was one of the most stern, mm -hmm. uh, unmovable black men they'd ever met in their life. So they didn't want to have a riot. Right. You see, because he had two shotguns and he had a pistol and there was something, you know. And, and sometimes, yeah. sometimes he'd march me carrying a shotgun. <laughs> I know my mom never had a fit. <laughs> um, he'd be going to town, yeah. and he'd give me a shotgun. Yeah, I am about 12, 15 years old. Yeah. Gun bearer for my, my <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> and uh, he's got the pistol, and we're going to town. Yeah, and he's story. going to shop. Oh, so, oh yeah, mercy. The, Go ahead. The, um, the, the article that I, or there's in several articles talking about the arrest, uh, of you and six or seven uh, young people at the uh, Royal, Royal Ice Cream, cream that was the name of, yes, sir, and right. you were charged we're with trespassing there. and violation of uh, segregation laws. And in 2008, they put up a plaque there, a historical marker to honor the uh, the first uh, uh, sit official sit-in. Well, you know, uh, I've never seen that, but they, oh, I do know that, that they did that. Yeah. Have, it, did I, have I ever seen that? 
the plaque. Did I get a picture of it? Or, this is my wife. She's she's my editor. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, um, uh, so in. Um, but do, let me just put it this way. Yeah, yeah. The, the the citizen people they knew who Peter Forney Johnson was. Right. That he was a strong black man, and he used to. I used to be his gun barrier. Right. Right. I would carry his gun with unloaded, mm -hmm. and he would carry his thirty-eight, mm -hmm. and he'd walk the town, yeah. and nobody was saying anything to him. Yeah. Do do you uh, when you did at the uh, ice cream parlor? What was were you afraid at that time, no. given the racist nature of the? No, you the, see, the I, power. let me tell you something. A shotgun and a thirty-eight is very comfortable. But you didn't have that. Well, I had the shotgun. Yeah. In the ice cream parlor? No, I didn't. Uh, the, no, uh, no. I, wa yeah, I yeah, walked with my grandfather. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, he had the yeah. shotgun. Um, well, you, and then as I understand it, after that, you uh, provided uh, advice, counsel uh, to people around the, the state on, on sit ins that you True. were. And you were, were you, uh, were you affiliated with SCLC or anybody at that sure. time? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I was one of the founders of SCLC. Okay, yeah. And uh, we had some disagreement with Dr. King because he was very, very quiet and non aggressive. And I was just the opposite. I, I wanted to ask you because you had known him at Boston, Boston University. University. And uh, had, had you disagreed with him at no. that point, or was it his later? No, uh, uh, I always respected him, and he respected me. Mm -hmm. Because he said, well, Doug, we need somebody out there that you to, to these crackers ain't going to do nothing. So we need you to come out and stir up the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so why don't you stay? No, 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 no. Each person has a function. I said, come on, man, that's bullshit. <laughs> said, Each man has a function. So I was the, the guy to, that to they stir do, the water. To stir the water. Yeah, that, that yeah. When I said that, I went down to the place that they had arrested me. So well, what do you say, well, I said, well, I just want some ice cream. That's all. Yeah. yeah. It's a bullshit. It was a lie. But uh, you know, I knew exactly. I knew exactly what I was doing. Did, did they, did you get convicted? Uh, no. They threw the... They didn't even arrest me. They didn't even arrest? Okay. Well, you know, they knew that my grandfather was a well-thought-of Methodist preacher. So they were, huh. And he had a shotgun. That, and he used to walk down... That, that wouldn't have, um, probably in Mississippi... My wife trying to get me to stop. She wasn't even around. Was, but that, probably, I'm, I'm just thinking that in Mississippi, that might have not have flown, no matter how influential. Well, we don't know. Yeah, I'm just saying your, your grandfather must but have My been grandfather, yeah, yeah. they knew yeah. uh, Reverend Johnson had a 38, yes, and yes. he had a, a new, brand new shotgun. But, um, what was it? And he walked downtown with his shotgun, and nobody paid him any attention. So you... I wouldn't have either. You were active then with the... Um, uh, in the whole sit-in movement in uh, North Carolina, and then at some point you came to uh, Washington. Well, I'm the father of the sit-ins in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. I because other people were scared, yeah. but they didn't have a granddaughter who had a, a double-barrel shotgun and a 38. So that was really a... Uh, so that, made, that made a difference. Yeah. That made a whole lot of difference. So when um, you came to Washington then in, what, the early... Uh, 1960s, do you yeah. recall? And um, we, we talked a, a little bit about your being in Washington before and working uh, at the, uh, the fish market, but... Um, it was my uncle's fish market, yeah. Oscar Barnes. When, when did you, uh, what were the first uh, civil rights uh, activities you got involved in here? I know you uh, started the, uh, the Black United Front. Uh, I don't know if that was immediately upon coming to Washington or... Uh, that was a, a result of my having come to Washington. Yeah. <clears throat> and I said that uh, we need to form a, uh, a Black United Front. Uh, we just can't go out as, you know, like we've been doing in the past. Well, we'll 
might do something today, or we might do something tomorrow. That's another. I said, we need to lay it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I used to sell watermelons for my father, for my uncle, all over the city. And, and my sin. name had gotten out. This, 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 this wild preacher, this, this preacher, man said, he is something else. So he's against uh, racism and all this kind of stuff. Did you have a church then? Or no. Did they not just, yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Okay. I, I, I didn't have a church then. Yeah, In fact, I don't think the bishop wanted me to have a church. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. I don't think they wanted me to have a church because I was, uh, was dead set on my uh, mm -hmm. Commitment to changing the, the system. Who, uh, who were some of the people you worked with at the beginning there? That uh, who were some of the other? Uh, oh, there are a couple other guys. Yeah. You know who? Now some of them may have been students who went to A and T. Mm -hmm. Because A and T was a technical college, so there was. So I didn't go to the technical school. So mm -hmm. I went to. North Carolina College, which was a liberal arts college, but mm -hmm. many of the other guys, they uh, went to A&T because they could take all kinds of agricultural mm -hmm. courses, blah, 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 this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I uh, didn't go that route. Mm -hmm. So um, in uh, D.C., um, what, what were some of the first things that you took on? What were some of the first uh, uh, Targets or, or any, you don't have to be the first ones, just some of the things that you, uh, you uh, got involved in and who you work with. I mean, whether, whether it was Marion Barry or Walter Fong. Marion Barry wasn't nowhere around. Yeah. He was and a punk can... somewhere, I found out later on. Uh -huh. No, Marion never had a thing to do with anything I did because he, yeah. he was a punk. Yeah. 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 Who, who did you, who were some of the people that Well, were there were a lot of, well, because that's my scoutmaster. Here in, in? In Hickory. Oh, and I meant in D.C. I, I mean, mean who you worked with. Oh, in D.C., no. For on civil rights. Uh, well, uh, one of the uh, uh, issues that I saw that came up uh, had to do with uh, uh, reparations of the, the churches, where you had, a, I guess, a, a confrontation with the, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember who it was here, with the, um, uh, Reverend George Hart at yeah. the National uh, Baptist Church in Columbia, Columbia yeah. Heights. It was a primarily white church, yeah. I guess. I, I guess you had a big debate with him oh, wow. actually at, at, at the uh, Sunday uh, Sunday service. Do you, yeah. Can you tell us how that all came about? Well, I decided to go right to the where I thought the the enemy was, mm -hmm. and so I took him on. Mm -hmm. I said, you say you believe in Jesus, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Jesus is on my side, he's not on your side, now what you gonna do? Mm -hmm. I was an arrogant little motherfucker, to mm -hmm. tell you the truth. <laughs> you were stirring the waters. I, I was, I was <laughs> deliberately stirring the water mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because I felt that uh, uh, I could no longer as a person, mm -hmm. and I, I called myself a Christian, you know, mm -hmm. so that meant that I had a responsibility, mm -hmm. you see. And as a man who was a Presbyterian named Brooks Todd, I made him he so, so sad when I started to come to place. But it was too bad. I said, you guys aren't doing anything, and you're going to do something, mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. when, when you came to Washington, uh, were you surprised at the extent of the segregation and racism here no compared to North Carolina I'm no sorry. so it was it was no wasn't there like was, it was I was it wasn't surprised. That much of a change no. yeah no I was, they needed to be um, baptized as I said I'm a Methodist but I know y'all don't mean in the kind of baptism we believe in but y'all need to be baptized mm -hmm. and that got really two white people Mm -hmm. He says it because no one had never spoken to them directly about mm -hmm. what you believed and how it affected black folk. I said, because how many members you got in your church? Black. Mm -hmm. How many pastors you had to come to speak to you? Black. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And so I put them on the spot. They didn't do anything, but uh, mm -hmm. they yeah. knew I was there. And now what had happened is that I had been to BU. I went to Howard, mm -hmm. 
for one year, and I said, nah, this ain't it. Mm -mm. This is too Negroid. <laughs> so I'm, uh, while I was at Howard, I heard this man named Alan Walter Chalmers who spoke. I said, woo, you, woo, I've never heard a white preacher like this. And I said, look, I said, you, I'd be you? He said, yes. I said, you, I think I'd like to be there. Well, come on, send mm -hmm. us the application. I sent him an application, and I moved off from North Carolina up to Boston University. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the best thing I ever did in my life was to go to BU. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they had Edgar Sheffield Bright, who's a, a worldwide uh, philosopher, and had DeWolf, who was a A1 uh, professor of, uh, of New Testament and all this kind of stuff. So BU had a much superior school than Howard did mm -hmm. because they had the money and all this kind of stuff, you see. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to BU. The, um, when you did come to watch, I mean, I'm, I was struck in doing this project how many uh, people prominent in the civil rights movement seemed to gravitate to Washington in the early 60s. Uh, you know, there was Stokely Carmichael, there was Marion Berry, uh, Sterling Tucker, Ivanhoe Donaldson, yeah. John Wilson, Frank Smith, yeah. earlier Julius Hobson. I mean, yeah. so these are all people, who, did this coming from the outside just sort of give more energy? I, I impetus think that we recognize that uh, we had to get outside of North Carolina to start a movement that would Mm -hmm. reverberate back through North Carolina and mm -hmm. that's what we did mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately unfortunately I was the leader mm -hmm. Marion Barry was too much interested in women uh, so we didn't get much out of him he's always interested in the skirts mm -hmm. but see my mama taught me very clear so you're gonna be a preacher you ain't gonna be running after no whores I'm gonna tell you that okay mm -hmm. I'll come and snatch you out of her. my mom was a Harris. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> she well, she weighed with ninety pounds. <laughs> but uh, so the, I mean, and this was where the the. But the interesting thing is, in D.C. there was no local government. No. You all, you, no. you and others were working to change things. Yeah. By, by just fierce uh, determination, yeah. and rather than saying there's an official, there's an agency we can go to, and yeah. Uh, in a, you know, there, in other cities you could pick at the city council or yeah. sit in at the city council, but we yeah. didn't have such a thing yeah. when you first came here. Yeah. Uh, so your idea was, what, just direct action and direct direct action. confrontation. Uh, the, the, uh, how did the churches react to Oh your, my God. I mean, you've told me a little bit. But well, they, uh, uh, they never told me what they said, but I, I think they used use very unchristian language about me, but mm -hmm. I didn't care. And I'm yeah. sure the Washington Post was not happy. Yeah. Uh, no. I knew Donna Graham then at that time, and he didn't make no difference to me. I thought him a I called him a punk. Yeah. I said, he ain't going to do nothing for you. Yeah. So y'all forget about it. <laughs> yeah. But there was um, an incident in, I'm not sure it was 1970 or so, where the FBI, the, under the COINTEL pro yeah. program, tried, well, they manufactured a letter and a and a flyer mm -hmm. to try to really drive a wedge between <clears throat> local uh, black activists yeah. and white, mainly white anti-war yeah. people. Do you, what, what do you remember about that incident? Do you, it didn't mean nothing. I mean, did, did you, did, did you, uh, when, you, when this flyer supposedly from the anti-war people, from yeah. this very racist flyer, did you... was not even worth responding to. But it, was, but it turned out it was the FBI that yeah. That concocted it. We knew who it was. Uh-huh. And uh, it just meant that... You knew it was a fake. Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah. It, it was pretty blatant. The stuff they yeah. came up with, I said, you got to be out of your goddamn mind. Oh. Oops. No, I, I would have... <laughs> my mother had heard that I said that. Uh oh <laughs> But I was really angry, you know. I said, well, you, you got to be in your fucking mind. What the hell are you thinking about? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I said, well, go give it to your people. Because mm -hmm. we ain't listening to it, and mm -hmm. we're going to take you on, whether you want it or not, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. So I was an absolutist, absolutist, you see. But you mentioned uh, your not so uh, complimentary feelings about Marion Barry. What, what was your assessment of, uh, like, uh, Julius Hobson? Uh, Julius uh, Hobson was a, was a radical. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, I had no, absolutely no problem with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He uh, really, uh, <laughs> I was involved in something one, and he came down and said, hey boy, I want to talk with you. I said, hey Jay, what the fuck you doing down here? He said, well, I want to see you, man. Everybody wants to see you. Mm -hmm. They tell me you ain't talking to nobody. I said, man, I can talk to you any day. When you want to talk? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I'll come by, blah, 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 blah. And he, he came over to the house. Mm -hmm. And he told me what he was doing, and I told him what I was doing. He said, well, you keep on doing what you're doing, and I keep on doing what I'm doing, and we will get something done. Mm -hmm. you, you were involved uh, in the, uh, as he was, and uh, many other people, in the anti-freeway fight. Uh, sure. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But did, and, and during this whole period, did you get arrested during that or no. for any other activity? Strangely enough, yeah. for some reason, for mm -hmm. some reason, they never arrested me for anything. Mm -hmm. I think they were scared because they had heard my speeches and they'd read my articles and they said, well, we don't want to get this nigger out on the, on the war path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, they knew who I was because I didn't hide what I was. I said, I'm at Boston University. I believe this, this, this. Mm -hmm. So my god, dad is a high school principal. He works out in Southern Pine. That's his job. That ain't my job. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, but this is where I stand. I'm a Methodist preacher. This is where I'm going to stand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for one reason, I guess they didn't want to, to involve the church in this stuff because they knew they would lose, mm -hmm. you see. What the, Go ahead. Uh, your office, uh, or your wherever you worked out of the Black United Front, that was in Shaw, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Where, whereabouts, uh, in, whereabouts in Shaw was it? Uh, Let me see if I can think where it was. Um, now. I was wondering what's there today. Huh? I was wondering what's there today uh, that we would. Oh, they've, they've remodeled the whole place. Yeah, right. It, it's, right. It's, 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 it's completely different places. Yes. <clears throat> but. Uh, my being in Washington, D.C. turned the things upside down because they never had anybody, any pastor. You know, you may have had a pastor who was right. nice and quiet and would say, well, I'd like for you to help us out on this. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You were? No, 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 no. Did you work with, to, work with Walter Fontroy, uh, yeah. too? How, how, was, how was he? Yeah. Uh, well, we had something in common. He went to Yale and I went to Boston University. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course, Boston University, I thought, was a better school than Yale mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the kinds of men who had mm -hmm. uh, left, mm -hmm. uh, who'd gone to those seminaries, the, the, the BU. That's why I went to BU, because I could have gone to Yale. Mm -hmm. I could have certainly gone to Gammon. That was right down the street to mm -hmm. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't feel that Gammon had what I had heard and found at Boston University. So yeah. BU was my school. Right. Yeah, and and uh, uh, did did Fontroy ever advise you you were being too uh, no. outrageous or <laughs> no? You know it was useless. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he likes to things more on a yeah, but he he he, yeah. he was a uh, a great person, part of uh, as the the whole thing, mm -hmm. you know. And we could always send him to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm not going because I'm going to call somebody a motherfucker and then I know they ain't going to like that. You were the bad cop. He was the, the bad cop. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. So we played that game very to the to the thing. You, know. mm -hmm. you see, I didn't have to do that, mm -hmm. you know, but we played it that way because mm -hmm. they knew they couldn't go to Fontraw and if, if they came to me, they knew they were up against the thing, mm -hmm. you see. And, and uh, I know I'll probably jump back to some other things, but Go ahead. eventually you, um, uh, when the first elected city council came along, uh -huh. and you ran and you won. Yeah. And um, despite probably opposition in the white community, yeah. despite, I'm sure, the Washington Post, I don't even remember, but I, yeah. I have yeah. vague recollections yeah. of them. We won. Criticized, and you won. How, uh, why do you think that was? Because the time had come, mm -hmm. and Hickory had uh, had been, uh, what's my wife there? Oh. What are you shaking oh, your head about? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Huh? And these, and the, oh, no, why, yeah, I right, didn't right. know her then, so she can't comment. <laughs> I see. Okay. Did I know you then? <laughs> no. So in DC, though, you, the, 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 why did the voters, uh, what, what do you think appealed to them that uh, got you elected? Well, they were tired of, uh, of, of the system, is how they had dominated D.C. And uh, we got to stop.
Dr. Seven. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, there's some things you want to uh, add on from North Carolina, but I'll finish up with the, okay. the D.C. portion. One of the things that uh, you also were a, a pioneer in in 1969, I think it was when you and Chuck Stone and yeah. some others, uh, Chuck Stone, the Afro-American, yeah. uh, held a press conference to announce a statehood movement. That, uh, That's what, true. What, 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 made you come to the, the, that point where you felt that was Well, Chuck so Stone good. was a, a very well-respected black newspaper man. Right. right. So I wasn't going to pick no fight with him, and he made some suggestions of what we might want to do. Mm -hmm. And he was very helpful for us, because we were young guys, you know, mm -hmm. just out of BU and places like that. Mm -hmm. But Chuck Stone was very helpful. <clears throat> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very helpful. And and he never said one movement, oh, y'all shouldn't do this. He said, let's, hey, hey, lady, let's keep the fire to the pressure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what it's, he, he talked to me. He was, Come on, Lee, let's talk a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said, hey, man, keep the fire on the pressure, because if you don't keep the fire on them, they ain't going to do shit. I said, okay. And, and you, uh, so you, you came to the, the feeling, though, that we needed uh, statehood in the District of Columbia in order to oh, achieve yeah. what? And so you had this press conference. Uh, oh. What what was the reception to, to that at the time? It, it blew everybody's mind because mm -hmm. they, they they couldn't they were wanting to try to go a place where they get a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And I said, no no no, it's more than this. Mm -hmm. We want our rights, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and <laughs> a visitor, um, and um, you. Um, uh, and it subsequently then, of course, Julius Hobson, a, a year or so later, I guess, picked up the, the, the statehood mantle and yeah. the, the D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, statehood well, uh, party. At the I stated I'm, I'm the daddy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Julius Hobson was the, uh, I forget what we call him, but he, he came along at a good time because Jews had not identified themselves as being a radical, you see, and white folks loved him. Mm -hmm. hmm. He, he did, though, go around saying he was a Marxist and an atheist. <laughs> yeah, I know, but <laughs> I, you know, I never quoted him on that. Yeah. Yeah. A Marxist and an atheist, you could, you could have said the same thing about me. <laughs> I am a Marxist. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no atheist, <laughs> you know. Yes, yes. But I knew that much. And I thought Boston University was a superior school to where mm -hmm. uh, the other blacks, fun, fun, fun. other blacks were going to right. Gammon, no, Howard, mm -hmm. Gammon, mm -hmm. Shaw University had a divinity school. So they had a lot of school, but mm -hmm. they did not have the depth and the perfected that we had. Their, their professors were not interested in mm -hmm. social reform. When you, well, when you're talking about uh, Hobson, that uh, one of the ways that he somewhat stood out from a lot of the other uh, black activists at the time is you, you wore a dashiki at the, the yeah. time, but he was always in a, a suit with his pipe and his yeah. hat, and yeah. and it was this marked contrast, but that sort of shows the 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 breadth of the, the, the yeah, I was thinking about that the other day, that he had a stingy brim hat. Yes. <clears throat> I don't think I ever wore a hat during a demonstration. I'm afraid I'd lose it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we don't, earlier talked about um, arrests, but in, you had uh, sort of glossed over that, I think. We, your wife mentioned that you had, and then you said you had been arrested. Could, oh, yeah. Uh, on camera, could you tell, were the arrests here and in North Carolina that you... Uh, oh, it was in North Carolina. Well, in North Carolina. I didn't get up this far. Okay, to, for mm -hmm. the arrests, yeah. Yeah, but <clears throat> uh, the interesting thing is that... Uh, <laughs> the, the guys who have arrested me, it's not a revenue. Now, so we've arrested you, but nobody touched you, nobody touched you, nobody touched you. Uh -huh. Because they didn't know what I would do or what black folks would do if somebody began right. beating up on Reverend Douglas Moore. Read, uh, the, going back to that uh, incident at the ice cream parlor. Royal ice cream parlor. I understand, though, that you did go into uh, court on yeah. that and were, were found guilty. Yeah. Uh, what, what, were you given a fine or what were you? They didn't do nothing to me. Uh -huh. Because they didn't know what, this stuff was so volatile, they didn't know what the hell I was going to do, mm -hmm. and they didn't want to do anything to, to, to steer up Reverend Douglas Moore to go off on another t mm -hmm. thing, you know. So, in, in they, were, they were very aware of who I was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see. 
Well, and I was aware of who they were. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of, uh, you know. Dance around each other. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's true. The, uh, did you uh, ever experience any threats? No. Fear for your life? Never. You know, no, because yeah. you see, everybody knew that my grandfather yes. yeah. was uh, Peter Forney Johnson. He lived by his shotgun. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he had a double barrel shotgun. Right. Yeah. And when he would go to town, he'd ask his grandson to carry the gun. And guess who that grandson was? But I'd be carrying this. It's, uh, double barrel is a great, it's a beautiful gun. But I'm not going to tell my grandfather, I, Grandpa, I can't carry your shotgun for you to town. He had his 38 in his hand. If you carry a shotgun, if I need a shotgun, I'll just take it out of your hand and I'll use it. Have you um, uh, ever, uh, you know, a lot of people submit to the FBI to get their, uh, under the Freedom of Information Act to see uh -huh. if they've got it right. Have you ever done that? Seen done if they, what? Seen if the FBI has any Oh, I know they have. I have, I mean, I have. But you haven't formally no. looked for them. Yeah. One of these days, I'll probably have my wife go do it. But, but I know, I know they had all kinds of stuff like that. <laughs> Shit, she go like this. Did you ever feel you anybody you were working with was an informant or anything of that sort? Never. I never did that because if you did that, you would destroy the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they may be right, and they may be wrong. So I never. Never looked for no, that sort no, of thing. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. and that's what somebody would want to do is. No, 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 no. We just did what we thought was, and we as I go when I look back over there. Uh, it's amazing that we did all that we did do, mm -hmm. because we set the definitions of what the movement was to be about in terms of sit-ins, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, we told kids, you are supposed to do this, you are supposed to do that, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So they had a code that they had. Mm -hmm. When, um, I'm sorry, I'm Go just ahead. joining some of my questions here, but uh, in, uh, North Carolina, again, before the ice cream parlors sit in, uh, uh -huh. there was the, uh, you had gone to communion, and uh, tell us a little about that, that day. I don't remember that now. Yeah, I think I'm old now. How old am I now? Okay. Uh, but it, when, and then, uh, Ann, like, want to jump in something, but when the, um, Y'all ask me in the, I, in the, um, Something out of a deliberately forgotten. But anyway. <laughs> the, the, that, that early, the first council, the D.C. council that you sat yeah. on, of course it had a Hobson and then yeah. he was succeeded by Hilda Mason when he, when he died while in office and you had a Sterling Tucker, John Wilson, Dave Clark, uh, Marion Barry, all had been active in civil One rights, worth a unlike nickel. the council today. Do you, do you see a difference between the sort of the attitude? They, they weren't the worth a nickel. No, none of them were worth a nickel. Not, not worth a nickel. I, I respected them, uh -huh. but they knew, they knew I knew that they weren't worth shit. Mm -hmm. so, so they stayed out. Of, they stayed out of my way, mm -hmm. and they didn't say, "Well, Doug, you all not do this." Doug, you all not do this. Mm -hmm. They never did that. What, what, I, the, what I was getting at was because they came out of civil rights, whereas today's council, none of them came out of the civil rights. That's movement. right. Does that? Is there a change in attitude on the council because of that, or? Or no, see, you don't see it making that much of. That's just this. That's a historical, historical. Mm -hmm. uh, how can I say? It? <clears throat> uh, I don't think anybody really got into <clears throat> the details of how the, the movement operated and what it how it continued and how it mm -hmm. disintegrated. Mm -hmm. You see. Mm -hmm. But we had enough stuff going for us to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to make a mark on history. Yeah. Yeah. That was a that was a good line. Yes. <laughs> Making my mark on history. That's what our project is about. We call it lessons of the sixties. Our last question to you know, good people like you who are involved in the whole thing is of all the things that you've done, you know, both in North Carolina but particularly in DC, what do you feel the most proud of that you were part of? Whether it succeeded or not, but tell us what you feel like mm -hmm. the most proud thing you were involved in. Well, a couple of things. Uh, I felt that uh, 
since I had been to Boston University, the best school in the, in the country as far as I was concerned, and it had bought, Martin Luther King had been there and, and some other people that after I went there, they began to, what do you call it, migrate to BU. They were no longer going to Gammon, mm -hmm. which was down in Atlanta, which was closer mm -hmm. to us than uh, Boston University, but I'd gotten a taste of BU. Mm -hmm. And uh, I began to talk about BU and why some of our students ought to be going to BU. And they moved up there. And that was, that was a, a tremendous uh, uh, difference. Mm -hmm. And of course, the dean of the School of Theology was, was an old Marxist socialist named Walter Mueller. Mm -hmm. So he was very comfortable. <laughs> he was very comfortable. And uh, we'll have to do a little thinking on this. There were some people who were put out of their churches and elsewhere, but you know where they went? They went to Boston University. Mm -hmm. They didn't go to Yale. Mm -hmm. They didn't go to Colgate. They went to Boston University mm -hmm. because they had heard about Dean Walter Mueller, the old, mm -hmm. we call him the old stern German, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's a part of uh, the move that they haven't talked about uh, his contribution, you know. And he was a great guy. He's still alive, but he, he was a tremendous man. Doug, I have a question for you. Okay. Talk about <coughs> the power structure in Washington, D.C. at the time. It's irrelevant. The Board of Trade. Irrelevant. The guys I, I know the who bank. they are. I the know who they the are. Banks. Those that were the ones that you threatened the most. That's right. Talk That's about right. that. Well, well, well they, want, they want a thing to remain as it had been for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really didn't spend much time with them because I figured that we could get them with a telephone call. Mm -hmm. So there's some things you know that you, you can do. You say, okay, look, this is where we are and this is where you are. We ought to be here together. You know, so that was that was at least the way I looked at it. I said, "No, we got to live together. And we got to work together." You see, there was a land grab going on at the time. Huh? A land grab. Yes. Talk about that. Well, I was interested in land grab because uh, I grew up in a place in North Carolina where my parents always talked about you got to own land. You got to own land. I could never figure out, I said, why in the hell did my mom and them say, you need to buy some more land? Why do you need to buy this? Yet? That's all. She said, why, 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 why? But my mother and my family always said, to, you know, you better, when you're around here doing this whole thing, you need to talk about the issue of land. Aunt, Aunt Arla May, she's a good, a good teacher. But she said, you need to be talking about the issue of land. Who owns the land and who's going to do this? I said, oh, shit. But, so, in a kind of subterranean way, they got it through to me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think, I think they really deliberately did this. Doris. <laughs> they, uh, but, but, but it was very good because what they did, they opened up uh, avenues for other black students to go to other white schools that they weren't going to at that time. That's right. They were going to Shaw, Gammon, <laughs> places like that. But because of my hitting on those schools, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, those schools began to open their seminaries to, to black students. Mm -hmm. I, the stuff that happened, happened down in Atlanta that they, I, I don't think it would have happened if they had uh, had those kids involved in this kind of thing, you know. But, and they began to have, uh, uh, they, they, they have, some of them drifted away. They said, no, -uh, we ain't going through this bullshit. I said, well, I said, we aren't ready to go for no war. So you go to, to the mountain somewhere and you are your little terminal and I'll pitch your funerals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they were preparing to commit suicide. They didn't know it, but I knew they were. That you come coming down to North Carolina and you're going to start a revolution, you're full of shit. Mm -hmm. said, I said, I just didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I said, well, we ought to do it. I said, well, okay, you go do it, but I think you ain't going to make it. Mm -hmm. I said, but anyway, that was just a part of the other part of my life mm -hmm. that I had to 
to deal with people who want to burn their house down. Mm -hmm. What about riding on the bus in the 30s? What about what now? Riding on the front of the bus in the 30s. Riding in front of the bus in the 30s? 1930s. Did, did you? you are riding on the bus. Well, did you have, well, I knew I could figure out the fact that the bus station didn't want to create no uh, wobbles. Mm -hmm. So I could ride in front of the bus. And the guy would come on the bus and say, well, they said, but you got this nigger here. Yeah, I know. He was here the last uh, 100 miles. So he going to stay right here the next 100 miles. And that's how it worked. Mm -hmm. That's how it worked. This is on an interstate bus. Interstate yeah. bus. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. how it worked. The, the, mm -hmm. You know, they said, well, say, well you got to go back, sit in the back, and the doo -doo -doo -doo. I always sat in the front seat of the bus. Mm -hmm. And some people said, well, this nigger can't do that. He, the, the bus driver said, yes, he can. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to drive this bus, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to get your ass off. So and what do you, you want to do? And you didn't even have your grandfather with you? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> now that would have been interesting. My grandfather and his shotgun. Yes. Woo! Uh, so and you did this several times. Yeah. On these interstate. Oh yes, yes. I, I had to. I had come to the conclusion that I was not going to move back into the what do we call it? Crow's nest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of an inefficient way, but that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Yes, dear. You would have been very young, though, when you were doing that, right? How would I have been, Dart? I was out of college. Yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah. Was I out of college? Yeah. What college had I finished? Um, North Carolina Central? No. Boston University. You were, okay. Yeah, I finished BU. And you did that? And that's where all that that wild stuff came with what I learned at BU. Now what about giving the seven students the communion before the Royal Ice Cream Power? <laughs> Pick up a little loud so we can hear it. What about giving the, the students communion before the Royal Ice Cream Power sit in? That's all right. Tell them how you plan that. Well, that's my, uh, uh, that was my uh, way of, of, of giving them some cover. Okay. Cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, we went to, we went to communion. Mm -hmm. I said, you go to communion? I said, yeah, just, just shut up and do what I tell you. Mm -hmm. Because I know you, some of you, you devils don't believe in this, but I'm going to save your ass. And they, these others had not been arrested before, no. ever? No, they had yeah. never been arrested. They never, yeah. they never have had to go overnight or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talk more about the Royal Ice Creek Center. What about it? Talk about it. They don't. You, they don't know the details of it. Well, it was, it, was, it was a place where I carried some kids there for us to get uh, served, and I don't remember whether they served us or not. Mm -hmm. They didn't serve us. Something. Yeah. Okay. And the police. They we, called the police. Called the police. You know what? I thought about this. All this mess up there, in Massachusetts. Yes. I said, Lord, have mercy. I said, <laughs> I said, we were lucky that some crazy people didn't decide to come back and start shooting us. Well, that's mm -hmm. right. Uh, that's, that's right. I played, you know, when I saw that stuff up in Massachusetts, I said, we were in a very difficult situation. But we had uh, a way, we were nice people. And many people said, well, you can't keep nobody from going to a restaurant because he's black, you know. Mm -hmm. So we let the other people tell him, wait a minute, why are you going to do this? You're going to do what? Because mm -hmm. he wants to go to a restaurant and have a hot dog? Are you crazy? Because mm -hmm. I would have said you're dumb as a motherfucker, but they, I, I can't curse. But uh, we were able to uh, get beyond uh, the traditional view of what a struggle was about, mm -hmm. you see. So it was black and white together. Mm -hmm. You said, well, you know, uh, y'all don't want me bringing all the white folks and all the black folks on our side. No, Reverend, no, Reverend, that's all right. Let's let, let sit down and talk about this year thing. Mm -hmm. This year thing, that's what they say. Let's mm -hmm. talk. I said, okay, let's talk. Mm -hmm. Now, I always talk with people who say, Reverend, we, need, we ought to talk, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. see. 
Mm -hmm. I never turned to him and said, no, I'm sorry, I will not talk to you because you're white and your people are racist. No, no. Mm -hmm. I said, well, let's talk. Mm -hmm. I always say, let's talk. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. And oftentimes we didn't agree on everything, but we uh, agreed on enough so that they did work. In the Hickory sit-ins, did that open up the door yeah, right away? Yeah, that's right down the there. Day? That's where I was born, in Hickory. Uh, no, I mean, but did it, it um, uh, at what point were the uh, blacks allowed to then go to the ice cream parlor? Uh, mm -hmm. was, it, was it Well, then or you know, years, it, years later? No, no, it wasn't years later, because uh -huh. they were ready. <laughs> so the reverend said, I know you want to take a little more time, but we're ready to move. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. But what are you going to say for some kids who are ready to put their lives on the on, on what is on, on the uh, on the line? Yeah. And those kids were ready to do it down in Hickory, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's way up in the mountains. <laughs> and they did it. Now that story has not been written. Not, not, it has not been written. Yeah, I because we could have had a because most of those kids I know who they are, and they have had parents who were hunters. H-U-N-T-E-R-S, and they had guns. And I said, I'm not going to expose this shit, this, these kids to, uh, to a, a, a war. And that's where they were going. They didn't know it, but I knew that yes, you're going to run across. Cause if the people start hitting on you, you're going to bring those guns out, and you're going to start shooting. And we're going to have a mess. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a mess. So it's by the grace of God, by the grace of God, now, why, why did the policeman slap your, your, grand, your uncle? Say what? Why did the policeman slap your, grandpa, your grandfather's son or your, your uncle? Why did the police slap who? Slap your grandfather's son. My grandfather's son? Because mm -hmm. they didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. When but, I mean, the police were trying to get him to, to cooperate, wasn't he? Nah. He just walked up and just He asked him where somebody was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all right. But uh, all I can say is that <laughs> my grandfather had a shotgun mm -hmm. and a pistol. Mm -hmm. yeah, he and the cops knew he had a shotgun and a sh and a shotgun, you know, is a very devastating weapon. What now anybody who's a hunter yeah. knows what a shotgun is. What <laughs> about the anti-apartheid law? <clears throat> what about it? When you were on the city council. Huh? When you were on the council. city council. What about it? What about that? I don't remember. Now you have to tell me. I'm old now. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, what was the equivalent of a shotgun when you were on the city council? Oh, shoot. <laughs> no, we had no, look, I'm telling you, there's no equivalent to a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. There's no thing. But the fact is that um, I always told people, I said, I'm a life member of the National Rifle Association. Well, anybody ought to know what that is. I said, and, and, and I don't believe in violence. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, I'm a life member of the National Rifle Association. Now, if you don't know, you can go ask them, is Reverend Douglas Moore a life member of the NRA? Mm -hmm. Go ask him, mm -hmm. and you will learn something. Mm -hmm. I am a life member of the NRA. Do you agree with all their uh, positions? Just about, about enough of me not getting killed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the, the interesting thing is that uh, <clears throat> I guess as I think about it, I kept the young blacks from migrating to that other pond, to, mm -hmm. to Malcolm X. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, now you, you can fool around if you want to. <clears throat> But these young girls ain't going to take this shit. Mm -hmm. So I used to say, look, uh, this is what we face. Now how are we going to deal with it? What One part, the, oh, sorry. What about the Howard University takeover? Howard what? You know, the students at Howard University. Well, that was a bougie takeover. <laughs> <laughs> That's her school. That's a bougie. Uh -huh. oh, okay. and, hold on. Yeah. And you can believe it, I was not going to do anything to destroy Harvard University. Not one thing. Uh-uh-uh-uh. So, no, no, no. I said, you may be disagreeing, but you ain't going to mess up this school. I, that's not the word I use. I do the F this school up. No, no, no. We ain't going to do that. I said, we got to have a school to go after the war is over. What, what, was, uh, what was your reaction after the uh, uh, Martin Luther King assassination here in Washington? Oh. What, 
did, did you, what was I? I did was very play? angry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I said, as far as I said, and I was, I was on uh, SCLC's board of directors, and I had known Martin ever since he was at Boston University. So right. he was a good friend of mine, <clears throat> and I felt that um, uh, we could not afford turning America into a race war. Now that's what some people wanted to do. I said, uh -uh, we ain't gonna do that. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I said, that's not Martin, and it ought not be you. Mm -hmm. And certainly it's not me. Mm -hmm. So we have to figure out a way how we're gonna make this transition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you out in the streets at all at that point trying to talk to people, or but I just wondered how you personally uh, uh, reacted or? What was I doing, Doris? You were in the streets trying to. I was out there having you, you had to be in the street talking because yeah. that yeah. that stuff was going so quickly, mm -hmm. and there were some kids who were mad and they didn't know why they were mad, mm -hmm. and they were said, "Well, we might well die, so let's get ready." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know there were a lot of guys who were talking that and they're trying to get their little two little guns together and all this kind of shit. Mm -hmm. So my position was very difficult. I said, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but we're not going to declare war on anybody because you, because they got more guns than we have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, now, if you want to be quite, you know, I said, now, I said I'm going to talk to you. And I had, a, I have an N word. I said, I'm going to talk to you niggas straight stuff. You ain't got no guns. Mm -hmm. So I know all the guns you got, about how many bullets you got. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to start a war with three bullets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was the kind of stuff I had to go, but where they could, well, I guess we'll shoot you. I said, okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But you better be ready mm -hmm. if you come to shoot me. Mm -hmm. You know, but I recognize that, uh, talking about a black revolution was, was the most irrational thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you had no guns. You had no money, you had no organization, you had nowhere to hide, you had nowhere to go. So what the fuck are you gonna do? Oh, I did. Excuse me. <laughs> I did curse them to that time because they were really they're like a, a mad dog. You ever seen a dog that was mad? He's running down the street. You don't know why he, why he was running after the rabbit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then he goes after the squirrel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a very difficult time, and particularly when Dr. King was killed. <clears throat> but he and I were friends. We, we went to Boston University, mm -hmm. you know. And I sometimes feel guilty that I did not talk to him about a, a better way of, of protecting himself, mm -hmm. you know, and how other people could participate in that. Mm -hmm. Now, that was an error on my part. Mm -hmm. But sometimes in a movement you get so uh, yeah. tied up in the moment mm -hmm. that you don't think of the, mm -hmm. the great picture. Mm -hmm. you wanna, do you want to talk about the uh, Black Panther Party? Zero. Ain't worth the nickel. They not. can't shoot. They can't curse. They can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. They couldn't shoot. That was my problem with the Panthers. I said, what, 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 you see, you, you revolutionary? I said, how many guns you got? I said, well, we don't know about that. Wait a minute, you're a revolutionary, you better have some damn gun. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, excuse me, this is cool. What are you talking about? You gonna start a revolution with three guns. I said, you gotta be out of your... I said, you know what, I've been around a long time. I ain't never heard such plain stupidity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You gonna send 10 kids out there to get slaughtered. Mm -hmm. Do you know who the biggest and greatest army in the world is the United States? Mm -hmm. And you're going to tip them to come over and ramshack your houses, your community, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was part of it. But now, we've never written this down because we didn't want, to, want people to know that it was such a, uh, what is it, such a difficult time, mm -hmm. you see. It was a difficult time. But I knew, because I grew up in Hickory. Mm -hmm. Right across the street was Mr. Aff Dallinger. He was the greatest hunter in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Did, did uh, was there anybody on the national or local scene that you particularly respected uh, uh, from that from that time in the civil rights? I mean, you know, he 
Chuck Stone. Chuck Stone. Mm -hmm. What about Jim Lowry? Huh? Lowry. Jim Lowry. Jim Lowry. Uh, Lowry went between the two groups. Mm -hmm. yes. Now I've never written this up because I'm intending. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was a good man, but he 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 really tried to bridge the the militants and the Doug Moores. Mm -hmm. You see. Stokely Carmichael, what were your thoughts? You Zero. Married him. You married him in Makiba. That's all right. I married a whole lot of people. Yeah, you did. On the street corner, right? Really? Huh? Wow. On the street, right? Yeah. I married him in Makiba. Uh -huh. yeah. I married a whole lot of people. I married you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he did marry them. Uh huh. <laughs> where no. Was, where was that? Right in front of the courthouse? Or? Huh? In front of the courthouse. Yeah. Hmm. Right, right here. Downtown. I'll be downtown. downtown. Yeah. yeah. What year was that? What year was that? Huh? What year was that? I don't. I don't. The one thing I learned to do: do not keep history of what you are doing, <laughs> because then you get arrogance. Ooh, look how good I am. Look how I'm good. No, no. You remember? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> you You've gotten more out of me than anybody else. Yes. Because right. you asked me questions. Uh, and I have to, if, if I don't... What about that book you wrote? Buying some of the D.C. City Council. Oh. Man, you can have a copy of it. Anybody can have it. Oh, he'll make an autograph copy for you. What was oh, in the book? book? What, what was, was in the book? book? Buying and selling uh, of the D.C. Council? City, city Council. council. That's, that's the whole title. Uh -huh. when, when did you write that? Uh, while you wrote, after you left the council? or? While you were on the council? No, while I was on the council. While you were on the council. Because yeah, I wanted them to know that the, 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 the council had been bought. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. You make sure you get a copy. Well, I'd have to, you know what? I think I have a whole box of those books. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to find one, two, right. three, Absolutely. four. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> there, it's called The Little Red Book. Everybody talking about Miles' little book? Yeah, it. It's called The Little Red. It's, it's called, they're not tired of the buying and selling of the D.C. City Council. Yeah. Hey, those? Yes. I think it kind of scared some people. Mm -hmm. The, but we, 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 we do have copies of it. We, yeah, about, love, maybe maybe a thousand left. Who helped you with that book? Or, or when did you get the information from? No, not me. Oh, uh, I just talked to people. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Who's your most important source? Chuck Stone. Now, what about your, 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 your trip with Absalom Jordan to see Arafat? To where? What about your trip? With Absalom Jordan to see Arafat. Yeah. Well, tell him about it. Well, what is that to talk about? We told him what we. How the FBI tried to keep you from going. Say what? How they tried to keep you from oh, going. Oh, shit. What they weren't smart enough to keep what us from going. Well, they, they didn't want me to go meet with Arafat. But we did. Mm -hmm. Abs and I, who it was? Somebody else. Was Chuck what Stone with us? Do you remember? Frank Schaefer Corona? No. Who? Who went with Frank you? Frank Schaefer Corona. No. No, he he's a good man, but he wasn't with us out within them, this particular thing. Mm -hmm. Marion Barry wasn't. I always tell people Marion Barry was in some woman's bed. He wasn't in the on the. What, <laughs> what happened when you got to Paris? Huh? What happened when you got to France and they, the flight was canceled? I don't know what happened. Tell me. You keep telling me about all this stuff. I don't. You know how old I am. He he's he's fluent in French. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. Uh -huh. So he. No, that's not a valid question, but not. Nah. So they rescheduled the flight. Oh, yeah. They canceled the flight. Tell them about that. I don't forgot. You tell everybody. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Well, they canceled the flight. And so he didn't? It, it didn't go where it was supposed yeah, to go. Yeah, they canceled the flight? Well, he, they probably got him off the plane. Oh, yeah. They kind yeah. of. Said the plane. But he, could, he understood French. I knew that might be kind of cool. So, oh. so go he got another flight. Right? Yeah. Well, talk about it. well, man, that's so long ago. Epsilon Jordan was with you the whole, a lot of your, What's this doing now? a lot of your activity, events, and career. Absalon Jordan, talk about him. What, about, what should I talk about him? The role he played. Well, he's a great guy. If I needed something done, we needed some guns, certain kind of gun, okay, you he that? did it. Mm -hmm. The and we brought them, and we had them in safe places, so we never had to use them because we made sure they knew we had them. 
No, we, we did not. Uh, some people want to be make suicide. I suppose. As I had no, I got a, a son who's a Marine. And uh, uh, and I have some other friends who are Marines. As I said, I wasn't about to have a, uh, a an encounter with the American Marine Corps. No, 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 no. You, you don't have the power. You don't have the ammunition. I was re reading some stuff the other day. I said, man, I said, where did they get the ammunition from? What about going down to the FBI building? I went down to the FBI building. That must have been somebody else. You knock it on the door? Yeah, I went down there. What were you trying to do? You... I, wanted, I wanted to come out and talk. You see, they had this great big old law. A lock on there. Bam, bam. They, they, they never came out, though. Did you have a s certain thing you wanted to talk to them about? Or? Oh, I had a lot, but nobody came to talk to me. Huh. It's, it's the building. Where is the building? Easy. Let's see. The, I'm trying to figure out where I am. I used to be tell where I am. Yeah, further. Yeah, yeah. Going that way. Let's see. Let's go on yeah. yeah, that way. Yeah. Yeah. Going that way. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, strange enough, I knew what our limitations were. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to have the 92nd or 93rd coming here looking for me. <laughs> and I got a, I got a, a pop gun. <laughs> Shit, you crazy. The, uh, the last thing, maybe somebody else has something else, but because uh, we usually cut it off sort of at 1975, but you ran for mayor uh, that tr time when Anthony Williams had all the phony signatures on his yeah. petition. And for a period of time, I remember the, the Washington Post, among others, being apoplectic that Doug Moore might get elected mayor. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. This because time. you were the only... Candidate, uh, pre prominent Democrat in the uh, in the field. That's true. What what was uh, what? Uh, how did you feel about? Well, that? I felt that if I wanted to leave my wife a widow, because they they would have they would have found somebody to come to take care of me. <laughs> I said, now I figured that out. Just said this. She said this. No, I said, no, 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 no. They, they, you ran they, for office, but... You know, huh? You ran, but Yeah, yeah. but I didn't make an effort. <laughs> so much of it. No, no, no. Yeah. I really didn't want to do that. So I was prepared to resign the day I was elected. <laughs> 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 See, now, you all are... Old, and it, this is back up in a corner. You're just giving us so many <laughs> wonderful pictures. <laughs> Things yeah. that you've done, I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, we should have had, that's, you've given us a great idea. Next time we have somebody, we'll have their spouse interview, because <laughs> yeah, you, no, no. you know that. You know well, she, she brings me back to, no, 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 this is what happened on that day. Yeah, yeah, that's really, uh, yeah. Were you ever a gun what? runner? Well, just a, a, an aside from. Were you ever a gun runner? the time that his, grandfa his grandfather was, was at home, and. The police deputy was chasing, looking for somebody, and he, I think he must have run across the property, and the, his grandfather's son, his uncle, was out, and the, and the deputy asked him where this guy was, and he refused to tell him, I don't know, I haven't seen him, so he slapped him, mm -hmm. and at that point, his grandfather came out of the house with a gun, mm -hmm. aimed at the deputy, and mm -hmm. the sheriff came up and said, no, you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, diffused it, but he was ready to mm -hmm. take him out. You talking about my grandfather? Yeah, yeah. Peter Farney Johnson? But he forgot all the details yeah. of that. No, I this haven't. one of his famous stories. Yeah. Well, I, I know what my grandfather was. He was a terrorist. <laughs> My grandfather, oh boy. Speaking of, of terrorists, though, were there, huh? were there, was there an active Ku Klux Klan in your area, speaking of terrorists? We never seen, we, yeah. uh, i tell you why. Yeah. <clears throat> we never saw them because they knew yeah. uh, somebody in the FBI was a Ku Klux, and they said, look, don't go fucking with Doug Moore. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. This is a quote. Yeah. Said, they are, they're armed, and they can shoot, and they go into the range every week, and they can shoot. Says, don't you go run down there thinking they, they're going to be nonviolent. 
Now that's what the FBI told him. I found this out from a guy who was in there. So Reverend, you know what we did? I said, what? So we have to out a little bit. I said, how what? <clears throat> I used to remember the guy's name. And he told me, I said, oh boy, you told him right. Because my grandfather always had his shotgun and his pistol. And I never forgot it. And so I had married her so she could tell me what to do. But, but it, it's true that uh, uh, at, at Stokely and the rest of them, they didn't believe they were up two inches because they couldn't shoot and they had no money. They couldn't shoot, they could talk, talk a good game. But when you got to go, go up against the M16 and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and you can't shoot, you better be ready, because they don't come not ready. Mm -hmm. so, so this is something I learned, you know, from um, from the NRA. It's a revenue you don't want to uh, charge these guys for something, and then they send 20 guys out to make sure that you never carried out, mm -hmm. that you that you are going to be finished because you're a threat to the nation. That's just any excuse. So I learned that real early in talking to some of my friends. I said, no, 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 you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. said, no, Manberry and Stokely and all of that, they have a clue. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was rereading some stuff over the other day. I said, Lord, have mercy. Just imagine. Now, I could have been dumb and stupid. <clears throat> and tried to go up against the FBI, the Treasury Department, all those people. That's crazy as a mother. Mm -hmm. I said, it's, 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 it's you, you can't win. I said, now if you want me to preach your funeral, I'll <laughs> see, exactly. yeah, okay, go by. Don't come by my house. I said, no, 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 I'm trying to tell you, you don't have the firepower. And so if you go out there uh, <laughs> trying to do uh, uh, something, take over, I said, you, you, you will be wiped out. I said, not only going to wipe you out, but they're going to come back and wipe out. Because they got a list. The FBI doesn't give them a list of who all these people are. So you're on the list. I'm on the list. And the other people, your wife and your mothers may be on the list. I said, but this you have to understand. So I guess if there was anything that, that I was able to do, I was able to at that time when they were, these young slipper snappers who were talking about they want a revolution. I said, you Chris is a mother follower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> said, a revolution says, oh, what? With what? <laughs> were you in, um... I wasn't even married to you then when all this mess was going on. But I at least had enough sense to know that the best, Army in the world, the United States Army, and you gonna take some Negroes off the street and put them up against the United States Army, the snipers that they got, and they could in you, wipe you out, and you won't even know who did it. Were, were you uh, uh, active at all in the uh, looking into police brutality in the district? Uh, the oh yeah, I talked about it. Yeah. But I never activated I said we should go out and shoot policemen. No, yeah, I didn't mean, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. I told my people, I said, you know, <clears throat> you have to be reasonable. Mm -hmm. I said, now, uh, I think I'm a reasonable person, and I'm a wild person, too, but I ain't crazy. Uh, I said, now, I think you best do this by going through the courts and let them bring these, ass, these, these guys up who are screwing us. Because if you don't, there are some people that are waiting for you to show your head and you bang, you gone. I have one more thing to say, to ask. I'm just wondering, um, uh, I, came, I came to Washington as a student in 1962 and I think you really? came in early 62. And for me, as a northern girl from Boston, right, it, Washington was so exciting right then because of two things. 
first the civil people my age had sat in and you know on the, in the bu uh, you know and done freedom rides in the buses. Uh -huh. I, was, I wanted to be part of that action somehow, even though I was white and they were mostly black. But, but I just wanted to be I wanted to be part of that, right? Um, and then the other thing that was so exciting for me was that Kennedy would, had just been elected, and it was all hopefulness that yeah, he, he yeah. were disappointed. I wonder if you actually this is a question for both of you because you lived through the sixties and seventies in Washington. Uh, was there a similar feeling that, that you had coming into Washington D.C. Uh, that it was maybe more hopeful than other places? Yes. Uh, were you excited? What was it yes. like when you came? Well, we I were was hopeful. All the time. I didn't want. I, I tell you the truth, all of them Hickory, and everybody in Hickory had a gun and more guns. Uh, I was not for violence. I've never been for, you know, on uh, violence, <laughs> all this kind of stuff, because that's irrational violence. Mm -hmm. And when the irrational violence gets started, there are a lot of innocent people who get burned. Mm -hmm. And I felt that there were people who were ready, if they felt that they were being threatened, to get rid of us. Even in the early 60s still? Ma'am. I mean, you felt that in the early 60s, but did you feel that in Washington particularly? Yes. Uh, okay. yeah. Well, this is nation's capital. As a Howard University college student at the time, yeah. and also all the way through high school, there was a sense of a national movement, awareness of mm -hmm. the sit-ins, yeah. the yeah. brutality, mm -hmm. the sense of indignation that, that blacks were considered subhuman mm -hmm. second class. And so, I mean, it wasn't, for me, it was a, it was a movement, um, a national movement. Mm -hmm. And I felt the excitement of that. Yeah, being in the national yeah, capital. Yeah, and feeling, yes, yes, not, yes. not isolated to Washington, yeah. but, but whatever was done outside of Washington was also an affront to me as a person and my sense of, of, of self and worthiness that our people I and mean, I think you probably don't. Yeah, it was more of a sense of, um, of national no, purpose. Per, yeah, yeah, movement yeah. extending well beyond Washington. Oh, yeah. Because right. you know we had the, the situations where people couldn't try on hats and yes, silly right, stuff right. like that. But that was kind of in, that was part of the indignation. But the the greater picture was seeing the the, the, the brutality. And the cruelty to blacks in the South, and yeah. mm -hmm. you it was know, worse there. But yeah, yeah. Somehow. What, what yeah. years were you at Howard? Uh, uh, sixty. I was there in sixty-three. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you mentioned, and he sort of uh, skipped over the uh, Howard uh, uh, sit-ins at uh, Howard uh, administration. Yeah, so I, I didn't know her I then. I wasn't there then. Yeah. I was. And <laughs> I, I didn't know her. I knew her <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot. Of, I was afraid out of running from uh, those civil rights uh, leadership, if you will, was coming right. out of Howard yeah. right. for the. Uh, now, the I was down at Tuskegee, and yeah. that's where the, the oh, where the uh, civil rights workers were mm -hmm. uh, in Alabama were enrolling the um, the voters down mm -hmm. there, yeah. and mm -hmm. I very much wanted to be a part of that, but yeah. I guess I was too a little too straight laced and not not. Mm -hmm. I think they, I never was able to go with them because I think you you also had to want to party with them. Oh. And yeah. I didn't know it. You know what I mean? I, just, just, uh, <laughs> I guess by comparison, kind of a nerd girl. You know what I mean? Not a nerd in the sense, but yeah. not not a party girl. So, you know. Well, I, I was at a little It tiny. didn't work with me, you know, at Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. Where, mm -hmm. When they wanted but to, Farmer was, was down there. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. And the um, there were others down there who mm -hmm. were. I was but, in a little project in 63, 64, 65, for part of the summer mm -hmm. in southwest Georgia in Moultrie. Um, and uh, I was amazed, an old Catholic girl coming from Boston, mm -hmm. right? I was amazed when I first got down there. I mean, I love the people, they're still my friends, but. The, the joke around town with with SNCC was always it was you know ten dollars a week and all the sex you can handle yeah you know yeah I mean and the, the, 
the anti the anti anti stick people picked that up. Yeah. And you know, we stopped saying it, but it was like that was the, that was the attitude. It was you really did work during the day. It was really kind of scary. <laughs> stuff, but, but you did party at night. It's true. And there was a lot of sex. You know, I was true. no fun. They just want to leave me. Alone. Like, she doesn't want to. We're not taking her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I did that Sammy Young. You know, because Sammy, Sammy Young was, was shot when I was yeah. down at Tuskegee. Oh, yeah. mm. So I was, you know, part of that, and oh. then there was a rumor that the deacons had pulled into deacons town. To defense, deacons of defense. They touch it, touch any of us. Mm. And I felt it was because of that. Um, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But anyway, I was, yeah, I was really very, as a teenager, I was very much um, a, a, uh, a lefty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thank you. Can we yes. you? She didn't know me then. Uh, she did. She knew me not. <laughs> when, when, did you, when did you meet? Uh, I don't know. It's been so long. How long have you been married? I guess I should ask that. Oops, I'm asking that tough question. What it was like then, what you said. Because, yeah. All right. I never I never took her to the range. Yeah? Because I, I figured if I took her to the range. Oh, I'm anti-gun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I believe in the right of my, my stepfather to have a gun in the house and yeah. supported that. But the guns never came out. They weren't yeah. for yeah. aggression, you know what I mean? Yeah, they they were. But I, I was never, I, and then I, I was raised in a, a household for my mother Mary uh -huh. that was a very teetotal and straight lace and yeah. no no guns. Yeah, not guns. How, how long have you been married? Yeah. Since uh, two, 1998. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. The, uh, well, thank you. Yes, thank we you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never get a chance to talk about this.